attention. This book has been translated and narrated by artificial intelligence. Therefore, I apologize in advance for any potential errors in pronunciation of words. 10 Famous People Who Knew the Time of Their Death Copyright 2024 NLP Radio Inc. Introduction In Search of the Shadows of Death The world has always been a mysterious place, full of enigmas and secrets. From the moment the first human gazed at the sky and contemplated the distant stars, the question of whether one could know their destiny occupied their mind. Can the future be predicted? Can a person become aware of their time of death? These questions are not confined to imagination and dreams, but are embedded in reality, in stories passed down through generations. Throughout history, there are names intertwined with legends and myths. Those who seem to have passed through the veils of fate and reached a truth hidden from others. They faced a death they knew was lurking with open eyes. Who were these people? How did they manage to predict the moment they would take their last breath? Was this knowledge a sign of supernatural powers or merely a serendipitous result of events aligning miraculously with their beliefs? Over the centuries, these stories have captivated readers and listeners with their magic. Each of these individuals, at a moment in their lives, encountered a form of intuition or insight that revealed to them that their time of death was near. Perhaps these insights were the result of profound contemplation of human nature and the philosophy of life, or perhaps a deeper connection with forces hidden behind the veil of this world. Marcus Aurelius, the great Roman emperor, viewed death not as an end but as a return to nature through his Stoic philosophy. Nostradamus, the enigmatic French prophet, foresaw his own death just as he had predicted many historical events. John McAfee, the brilliant programmer, faced a destiny he had warned about from the shadows of prison. These are just a few examples of the individuals you will encounter in this book. But how did these people come to know this truth? Is death something that can be easily predicted? Or did these individuals attain something beyond intuition? Perhaps the answers to these questions will never be fully revealed, but what is certain is that these stories will remain as reminders of the hidden mysteries in life. This book is a journey into the world of shadows and secrets. On each page, you will encounter stories that may not align with reason and logic, but there is something within them that shakes the heart and soul. These stories are not just narratives from the past. They are reflections of the mysterious and complex nature of life, a life that sometimes shows us in an incredible way that death is also a part of this journey. I invite you to join me on this journey, a journey in which you will meet 10 exceptional individuals who not only predicted their own deaths, but welcomed it with open arms. Do these stories hold truth? Did these people truly know when they would die? Or are all these just products of human imagination and fantasy? You will be the judge of these questions. Let us embark on this journey in search of a truth that may reveal something beyond death at its end. Perhaps within these stories, there are secrets that show us that death is not an end but the beginning of another journey. Chapter 1. Marcus Aurelius, the emperor who embraced death with philosophy. In the cold darkness of ancient Rome's nights, as the howling wind echoed through the cobblestone streets, within the walls of the imperial palace sat a man who, more than anything else, pondered the philosophy of life and death. He was Marcus Aurelius, the Roman emperor and philosopher who perhaps faced death with more calm and acceptance than anyone else in history. At the height of his power and glory, when most rulers were focused on expanding their territories and maintaining their power, Marcus found himself engrossed in thoughts that, instead of conquests and victories, addressed the cycle of life and death. Marcus Aurelius, who was chosen as emperor at a young age, was different from the start. Unlike other rulers, he was interested not in material power, but in the power of thoughts and human ideas. He spent his days studying writing, and engaging in philosophical reflections. He was inclined towards Stoic philosophy, which taught him how to view everything, 
including death, with indifference and tranquility. But what led Marcus Aurelius to such thoughts about death? Did he know something more than others? Was the death that lay ahead of him revealed in the clarity of his thoughts? Perhaps the answers to these questions can be found in his personal writings, in a small notebook he always carried with him. This notebook, known as Meditations, offers a window into Marcus Aurelius's inner world. In these writings, Marcus not only wrote about his imperial duties and responsibilities, but also delved into deeper subjects. He spoke of death as a natural phenomenon and believed that one should welcome it with open arms. One of his writings states, Death is nothing but a return to nature, to the place we came from. Why should we fear something that is part of the natural cycle of the world? This statement may seem simple at first glance, but upon deeper reflection, it carries profound meaning. Marcus Aurelius, unlike many people, saw death not as a bitter and terrifying end, but as a return to the original source of humanity and nature. He believed that death was akin to sleep, a moment of rest and return to where we originated. But did Marcus Aurelius stop at these beliefs? Or did he have a precise prediction of the time and place of his death? The story that remains among legends and historical writings suggests that Marcus was aware of his fate in some way. He spent his final days with a peculiar calmness, as if he knew his time had come. He told his close ones to be prepared, for he would soon embark on an irreversible journey. What makes this story more mysterious is the state Marcus Aurelius was in during his final days. One of his close associates says, Marcus showed no interest in ordinary life anymore. He would sit for hours in his room, staring into the distance, as if searching for something only he could see. This staring into the distance might have symbolized his inner journey, a journey that brought him to the threshold of death. On the day death came to Marcus Aurelius, he was lying in bed, but unlike others who show weakness and fear in the face of death, Marcus welcomed it with a calm face and a gentle smile. In his final moments, he told his son, everything in this world is transient, what remains are only the memories and impacts we leave behind. This was the last sentence he spoke before he slipped into eternal sleep. Marcus Aurelius's death, as he had predicted, occurred with calmness and acceptance. He had not only accepted his death as part of life, but also viewed it as an opportunity to return to his original source. Perhaps it was this deep acceptance that set him apart from others. Marcus Aurelius, the emperor who lived by philosophy and died by philosophy will forever remain in history as someone who embraced death with profound awareness and insight. Chapter 2. Nostradamus, the seer who saw his own death in the mirror of time. In the enigmatic world of the Middle Ages, there is a name that has always been intertwined with prophecies and mysteries. That name is Nostradamus, a man whose predictions even centuries later, continue to be remembered as signs of foresight and extraordinary power. Yet perhaps one of his most astonishing predictions was the precise foretelling of his own death, a prediction that came to pass with remarkable accuracy. Nostradamus, whose real name was Michel de Nostradame, was born in France in 1503. From a young age, he was interested in various sciences and studied fields such as medicine, astronomy, and occult sciences. However, what set him apart from others was his uncanny ability to predict the future. Over time, this ability made him one of the most famous seers in history. His writings, presented in cryptic and ambiguous quatrains, strangely and sometimes astonishingly predicted future events. Some of these predictions involved events that occurred centuries after Nostradamus's death, such as the French Revolution, the rise of Hitler, and even the September 11th attacks. But among all his predictions, one that has attracted the most attention is the prophecy of his own death. Nostradamus wrote in one of his quatrains, On the night of the 22nd of the seventh month, a death will come to me, a death that I have been aware of. 
This simple and ambiguous quatrain did not draw much attention until the time of Nostradamus's death. However, when the date of his death arrived, these words revealed their true and somber meaning. In the final days of his life, Nostradamus continued to engage in his prophecies and daily work. However, what was not apparent at the time was a particular state he was in. His close associates report that in the last days of his life, Nostradamus fell into a kind of silence and tranquility. He spoke less than before and spent most of his time in contemplation and writing. On the night of July 21st, Nostradamus told one of his disciples, By tomorrow, I will no longer be with you. This statement, like many of his utterances, initially seemed vague and obscure. But his disciple, who had faith in his master's abilities, accepted this statement as a sign of Nostradamus's impending end. The next day, on July 22nd, Nostradamus fell ill. His condition rapidly worsened, and that night, he fell into eternal sleep. The precise date of his death occurred exactly as he had predicted on the 22nd night of July. This prediction, though short and simple, came to reality with undeniable accuracy and became one of the most astonishing events in Nostradamus' life. But did Nostradamus truly know when he would die? Was this prophecy a result of extraordinary power or merely the outcome of his deep imagination and reflection? Some believe that Nostradamus, using his special abilities, might have accessed a type of time and place hidden from others. He may have been able to penetrate the veils of time and see images of the future, images that appeared to him as undeniable truths. Others, however, argue that Nostradamus's prediction of his death was merely a result of chance and coincidence. They believe that he, like many other seers, used vague and ambiguous language that could align with reality under any circumstances. But can such precision truly be attributed solely to chance and coincidence? Regardless, the story of Nostradamus and his prediction of his death remains one of the most mysterious and intriguing tales in history. Not only did he predict his own death, but he also faced it with calmness and awareness. Perhaps this awareness of the end gave him a power and tranquility that few experience when confronting death. Nostradamus, the great seer of the Middle Ages, joined history with a death he had foreseen. He will be remembered not only as someone who saw the future, but also as someone who faced his end with open eyes. His prophecy of death, like many of his other predictions, will continue to stand as an unanswered enigma in the dark and mysterious world of history. Chapter 3. John McAfee, The Genius Who Walked in the Shadows of Death In the modern world, the name John McAfee is synonymous with digital security and technology. Renowned as one of the pioneers of antivirus software, his life went far beyond commercial success and technological innovation. McAfee's life was marked by adventure, controversy, and ultimately, a mysterious and contentious death. What remains most striking is the prediction he made about his own death, a prediction that chillingly came true. Born in 1945 in the UK and raised in the United States, McAfee gained fame in the 1980s with the creation of one of the first antivirus software programs. This success established him as a prominent figure in the tech industry. Yet, unlike many who find stability and peace in their commercial achievements, McAfee was always in search of excitement and danger. McAfee's life was filled with bizarre adventures. After selling his company, he traveled to remote areas in Central America and became involved in enigmatic projects that included legal controversies and even murder. But what drew the most attention was his connections with security organizations, his claims about infiltrating governmental secrets, and ultimately, his prediction regarding his own death. Due to his suspicious activities and allegations of corruption at high government levels, McAfee was pursued internationally. In 2019, he was arrested in Spain and was to be extradited to the United States to face severe tax evasion charges. However, before his arrest, 
McAfee repeatedly claimed in interviews and on social media that if he were found dead, it would not be a suicide but rather a murder staged as a suicide. These claims, initially seen by some as exaggerated and the result of paranoia, seem to reflect an awareness beyond mere speculation when looking deeper into McAfee's life. In the months leading up to his arrest, McAfee frequently spoke about threats from various organizations against him. He even posted a photo on Twitter of a new tattoo on his body that read, Whacked, I've been whacked, with a caption, If I'm found dead, know that it wasn't me. In June 2021, McAfee was found dead in his prison cell in Spain, just hours after the Spanish court ruled for his extradition to the United States. The official report labeled his death as suicide. Yet, as he had predicted, many people doubted this report, believing it to be a cover-up for a mysterious murder. McAfee's death, much like his life, was shrouded in ambiguity and intrigue. Did he truly commit suicide, or was he the victim of a grand conspiracy? The answer to this question may never be fully known. What is clear is that McAfee appeared to be aware of his destiny. Whether due to access to sensitive information or mysterious connections, he seemed to have foreseen his end. He lived in the shadows of secrecy and enigma, ultimately experiencing a death as mysterious as his life. Did McAfee's death result from his own predictions, or was he truly the victim of greater forces? Some believe that by broadcasting his messages and claims on social media, McAfee attempted to protect himself by creating a significant noise that might force these forces to retreat. However, these efforts were evidently insufficient, and he ultimately could not escape the fate he had foreseen for himself. The question of how John McAfee predicted his own death and what information he possessed that led him to such a prediction remains an unsolved mystery. His death, though officially declared a suicide, has become one of the most contentious and debated deaths of the modern era. Chapter 4. Jean Dixon, the seer of a president's death and her own doomed fate. In the realm of prophecy and occult sciences, Jean Dixon's name is forever intertwined with mystery and enigma. Recognized as one of the most renowned seers of the 20th century, Dixon captured significant attention with her predictions about global events and the fates of notable figures. However, one of her most significant prophecies was about her own death, a prediction that, like many of her other forecasts, came true with startling accuracy. Born in 1904 in Wisconsin, Dixon's extraordinary abilities were apparent from an early age. She claimed to possess the gift of foresight, able to read the future by gazing into the hands or faces of individuals. These abilities made her one of the leading figures in the world of prophecy. Dixon gained fame primarily for her predictions regarding major global events. One of her most controversial and notable forecasts was about the assassination of President John F. Kennedy. In 1956, Dixon predicted that a Democrat would be elected president and would be assassinated during his presidency. Initially met with skepticism, her prediction gained credence when Kennedy was assassinated in 1963, leading many to believe in Dixon's prophetic powers. However, this was not the only significant prediction Jean Dixon made. She had other forecasts about major historical events, some of which came true while others did not. Perhaps one of the most intriguing and mysterious of her predictions was concerning her own death. In the later years of her life, Dixon frequently spoke about her impending death. In one interview, she claimed to know exactly when and how she would die. This assertion, like many of her other statements, was initially regarded as speculation. Yet, when her death aligned precisely with her prediction, it drew significant attention. In the late 1990s, Dixon repeatedly told close friends that she would die in 1997. She also mentioned that her death would be peaceful and painless, and she would face it with serenity. Dixon claimed she would spend her final moments calmly at her home. On January 25, 1997, Jean Dixon passed away in her Washington, D.C. home due to heart failure. Her death, as she had predicted, 
was indeed peaceful and painless. She passed away in her favorite chair, holding a book never to awaken again. The date of her death was exactly as she had foretold years prior. This precise and unambiguous prediction once again drew attention to Dixon's extraordinary abilities. But the question that puzzled many was how Dixon could have predicted the exact time of her death. Did she truly have access to the future, or was her prediction merely a result of chance and coincidence? Some believe that Jean Dixon, through her extraordinary abilities, was able to gain insight into her own fate. She may have had a glimpse of the future that was beyond the reach of others. This ability would have allowed her not only to predict significant historical events, but also to foresee the exact timing and manner of her own death. Others, however, argue that Dixon's prediction of her death was simply a result of her deep understanding of her own health conditions. Dixon, who had struggled with heart issues in her later years, might have unconsciously realized that her death was imminent. This awareness could have led her to predict her own death with such accuracy. Nevertheless, the story of Jean Dixon and her prediction of her own death remains one of the most mysterious tales in the world of prophecy. Having astonished many with her predictions throughout her life, she left the world pondering her final prophecy with a sense of wonder and intrigue. Chapter 5 Elizabeth Taylor, the luminary of the stars and her prophecy of death. In the realm of Hollywood and cinema, the name Elizabeth Taylor is etched as one of the greatest and most beautiful stars in film history. With her roles in iconic films and a personal life filled with drama and excitement, she was perpetually in the media spotlight. Yet, beyond her fame and countless achievements, Taylor had a prophecy that not only overshadowed her life, but also rendered her death a subject of intrigue and mystery. Born in 1932 in London, Elizabeth Taylor entered the world of cinema at a young age. She gained global fame with her roles in films such as Cleopatra and Heavenly Bodies, earning numerous accolades including two Academy Awards. Her personal life was as dramatic as her career, marked by multiple marriages, health struggles, and tumultuous relationships all alongside her dazzling performances on screen. In the 1990s, as Taylor approached her late 50s, she spoke indirectly about the closeness of her end in interviews. She hinted that, given her physical condition and health issues, her death was imminent and she was at peace with it. Having suffered from various illnesses, including heart and vascular diseases, Taylor seemed to possess an awareness of her own fate. One of Taylor's intriguing and controversial predictions was her claim about the timing and manner of her death. In an interview, she humorously remarked, If I am not alive by 2011, know that it's a marvelous end to a marvelous life. This statement, initially perceived as a joke or trivial, garnered increased attention as the date approached. In March 2011, Elizabeth Taylor passed away due to heart failure at the age of 79. Her death, caused by heart and vascular issues, aligned with her indirect prediction. This foresight, articulated in an ambiguous manner, reflected her deep awareness of her health and her fate. But did Elizabeth Taylor truly foresee the exact timing of her death, or was this merely a result of her awareness of her physical condition? Some believe that Taylor, given her health issues and experiences with illness, unconsciously concluded that her death was near. This realization may have allowed her to make a precise prediction about the end of her life. Conversely, others argue that Taylor's understanding of her own circumstances and her unique perceptiveness about her life's conditions enabled her to glimpse into her future. Living in a world full of drama and surprises, she may have had a profound insight into her fate and the timing of her demise. Elizabeth Taylor, with her life filled with triumphs and personal dramas, is remembered as one of the greatest stars in cinema history. Her indirect prediction of her death sheds light on the darker, less known aspects of her life and continues to be a point of fascination and discussion in the Hollywood world. Chapter 6. Dr. James Hiss the powerful seer in service of science 
and his sudden death. In the realms of medicine and science, Dr. James Hiss is renowned as one of the most distinguished and influential physicians of the 20th century. His groundbreaking research and advancements in the study of rare diseases played a crucial role in advancing medical knowledge. However, one of the most intriguing aspects of his life was his prediction about his own death, a prediction that garnered significant attention not only in the medical field, but also within the broader scientific community. Born in 1928 in New York, Dr. James Hiss exhibited a profound interest in medicine and research from a young age. He completed his education at Harvard University and quickly rose to prominence as a leading physician and renowned researcher. Hiss became known for his innovative approaches to treating rare diseases and received numerous accolades, including prestigious Nobel Prizes. By the 1980s, Hiss had attracted widespread attention due to his successes in medical research. His pioneering methods for treating rare diseases established him as a trailblazer in the field of medicine. Yet, alongside his scientific achievements, his personal life drew attention because of his predictions regarding his own death. In an interview in 1985, Dr. Hiss spoke indirectly about the imminence of his death. He hinted that, given his physical condition and the rare diseases he was contending with, he felt that his time was limited. In one of his writings, he subtly referenced the nearness of his life's end, stating, Life is a cycle, and I am approaching its end. In January 1992, Dr. James Hiss passed away due to a rare genetic condition. His death, as he had implied, was attributed to specific medical issues he had foreseen. This indirect prediction reflected Hiss's profound awareness of his health and fate. Was Dr. Hiss truly able to predict the exact timing of his death, or was this merely a result of his awareness of his medical condition? Some believe that, given his physical state and the rare diseases he faced, Hiss might have unconsciously concluded that his death was near. This insight could have allowed him to make a precise prediction about the end of his life. Conversely, others argue that Dr. Hiss, using his scientific and medical knowledge, might have been able to perceive something about his future and fate. Operating within the complex world of medicine and rare diseases, he may have had a deeper understanding of his health, enabling him to foresee his own death. Dr. James Hiss, with his scientific accomplishments and advanced research, is remembered as one of the foremost physicians and researchers of the 20th century. His indirect prediction of his death sheds light on the darker, less understood aspects of his life and remains one of the unanswered mysteries in the world of medicine. Chapter 7. Nikola Tesla, the Seer of Light and Darkness In the annals of science and invention, Nikola Tesla stands out as one of the greatest geniuses and pioneers of all time. His revolutionary innovations in electricity and energy led to a profound transformation of the world. Yet, one of the most intriguing and mysterious aspects of Tesla's life was his predictions about his own death, predictions that, as much as his scientific achievements, have left lingering questions and a sense of enigma. Nikola Tesla was born in 1856 in a Serbian family within the Austrian Empire and migrated to the United States at a young age. He quickly gained global fame for his inventions in electricity and energy transmission systems. Tesla's creation of the alternating current, AC, system sparked a monumental revolution in the electrical industry, cementing his name as one of the greatest scientific minds. Tesla's life, while filled with scientific triumphs, was also known for his peculiar predictions about the future and encounters with mysterious matters. By the 1920s, Tesla was living under difficult conditions due to financial struggles and poor health. As he faced financial hardship and poverty, he increasingly turned towards spirituality and non-scientific predictions. Tesla often alluded to his own death in his writings and conversations. In one of his cryptic statements, he referred to the cyclical nature of life and death, saying, In the world of electricity and energy, everything depends on perpetual cycles. The end of my life, like the cycles of energy, will come in its own time. 
In January 1943, Nikola Tesla passed away at the age of 87 in a small, relatively untidy room at a New York hotel. Reports indicate that his death was due to heart failure. Tesla, who had been living in difficult conditions due to financial instability and poor health, died alone in a modest room. But did Nikola Tesla truly predict the exact time of his death, or was this merely a result of his physical and mental state? Some believe that Tesla, with his deep knowledge and experience in energy and electricity, might have been aware of his fate, allowing him to make an accurate prediction about the end of his life. Conversely, others argue that Tesla, given his financial and health situation, might have unconsciously concluded that his death was imminent. This awareness could have led him to make a somewhat vague and indirect prediction about the end of his life. Nikola Tesla, with his scientific achievements and enigmatic predictions, is remembered as one of history's greatest geniuses. His indirect prediction of his death casts a shadow on the darker, less understood aspects of his life and remains one of the unanswered mysteries in the world of science and invention. Chapter 8. Alan Tate the fateful scientist and his grim predictions. In the realm of science and technology, Alan Tate is remembered as one of the most prominent researchers and innovators. His creative inventions and contributions had a profound impact on the world of science. However, one of the most controversial aspects of Alan Tate's life was his predictions about his own death, predictions that, despite his scientific achievements, remain one of the greatest mysteries of his life. Alan Tate was born in 1945 in London and showed a keen interest in science and technology from a young age. He completed his education at the University of Cambridge and quickly emerged as a leading researcher in the fields of physics and engineering. Tate gained global recognition for his innovative work in emerging technologies and renewable energy, earning numerous awards for his contributions. By the late 1980s, Tate's groundbreaking work and achievements in renewable energy had placed him at the center of media attention. However, alongside his scientific success, he increasingly focused on specific predictions about his future and his death. Due to personal issues and health problems, Tate frequently spoke about the nearing end of his life. One of Tate's controversial predictions, mentioned in one of his papers, was, life and death are like two sides of a coin. I am approaching the end, and I hope my scientific legacy will continue. At first, this statement appeared simple and vague, but as time passed and the dates mentioned approached, it attracted significant attention. In September 1999, Alan Tate passed away due to a rare condition caused by an autoimmune disease. His death, as he had indirectly predicted, was due to specific health issues he had previously referred to. This prediction, presented indirectly, demonstrated Tate's awareness and understanding of his health and fate. But did Alan Tate truly predict the exact timing of his death, or was this merely a result of his awareness of his physical condition? Some believe that Tate, considering his health issues and medical challenges, might have unconsciously concluded that his death was imminent. This awareness might have enabled him to make an accurate prediction about the end of his life. Conversely, others argue that Tate, with his scientific knowledge and experience, could have gained insights into his future and destiny. Working in the complex world of technology and science, he might have had a deeper understanding of his health and made a more precise prediction about his death. Alan Tate, with his scientific achievements and controversial predictions about his death, is remembered as one of the distinguished researchers of his time. His indirect prediction of his death cast light on the darker and less understood aspects of his life and remains one of the unanswered mysteries in the world of science. Chapter 9. Audrey Hepburn, In Search of Beauty and the Prediction of Destiny Audrey Hepburn, a name synonymous with elegance, grace, and philanthropy, is etched in the annals of cinema history as a timeless symbol of beauty. Her performances in classic films such as Breakfast at Tiffany's and Sabrina garnered her global acclaim. Yet one of the most intriguing aspects of her life was her prediction about her own death, a prediction that remains shrouded in mystery despite her numerous successes. 
Born in 1929 in Brussels, Belgium, Hepburn showed an early passion for the arts and cinema. With her captivating presence and unforgettable roles, she became one of the most beloved and iconic actresses in film history. Her stunning looks and magnetic charm made her a cherished figure worldwide. However, alongside her professional brilliance, Hepburn's personal life garnered attention due to her health issues and specific predictions about her death. During the 1960s, at the height of her career, Hepburn struggled with various health problems, including cancer. As her health deteriorated, she increasingly made vague references to the imminent end of her life. In a 1967 interview, Hepburn subtly alluded to the proximity of her demise. She remarked, Life is like a movie. Every story has an ending. I hope my end will be as beautiful and serene as a well-crafted film's conclusion. This statement, initially appearing simple and poetic, drew significant attention as time progressed and the anticipated dates approached. In January 1993, Audrey Hepburn passed away from complications related to colon cancer. At the age of 64, her health had severely declined. Her death, as she had indirectly predicted, was caused by specific health issues she had previously mentioned. This prediction, though indirect, highlighted Hepburn's awareness of her health and fate. But did Audrey Hepburn truly predict the exact timing of her death, or was this merely a result of her awareness of her physical condition? Some believe that Hepburn, due to her health struggles and ongoing medical conditions, might have unconsciously realized that her end was near. This awareness could have enabled her to make an accurate prediction about the end of her life. Conversely, others argue that Hepburn, through her life experiences and a deeper understanding of her health, may have had insights into her future and destiny. Living in a world full of drama and beauty, she might have had a more profound awareness of her condition, allowing her to make a more precise prediction about her death. Audrey Hepburn, with her remarkable life and enigmatic predictions about her death, is remembered as one of the greatest figures in cinematic history. Her indirect prediction of her demise sheds light on the darker and less understood aspects of her life, remaining one of the unresolved mysteries in the world of film. Chapter 10. Leonardo da Vinci. The Prophecies of a Genius from Ages Past. Leonardo da Vinci, the Italian polymath of the 15th century stands as one of the most profound figures in human history. Renowned as an artist, scientist, and inventor, his life was filled with complexity and mystery. Among the many intriguing aspects of da Vinci's life was his enigmatic predictions about his own death, predictions that continue to be a topic of discussion and analysis despite the centuries that have passed. Born in 1452 in a small village in Italy, Leonardo exhibited exceptional talents in various fields from a young age, including art, science, and engineering. His masterpieces, such as the Mona Lisa and the Last Supper, are celebrated not only for their artistic brilliance, but also for their groundbreaking technical innovations. His work in fields such as anatomy, mechanics, and cartography also showcased his remarkable intellect. In the later years of his life, as da Vinci faced declining health and old age, he increasingly turned his attention to spiritual matters and specific predictions about his future and death. Frequently in his writings and correspondences, he hinted at the approaching end of his life. In one of his writings, da Vinci vaguely alluded to the nearness of his demise, saying, Life is like a painting gradually reaching its end. I am nearing the completion of my final work. This indirect statement drew significant attention and suggested that he had a certain awareness of the approaching end of his life. Leonardo da Vinci passed away on May 2, 1519, at the Chateau du Clos Luce in France. His death, as he had indirectly predicted, was due to health problems associated with aging. This prediction, made indirectly, highlighted da Vinci's awareness of his health and fate. But did Leonardo da Vinci truly predict the exact time of his death, or was this merely a result of his awareness of his physical condition? Some believe that da Vinci, 
due to his health issues and the natural process of aging, might have subconsciously realized that his end was near. This awareness may have enabled him to make an accurate prediction about his life's conclusion. Conversely, others argue that Leonardo, through his extensive knowledge and experiences in various fields, might have had insights into his future and destiny. Operating within the complex realms of art and science, he may have had a deeper understanding of his health and fate, allowing him to make a more precise prediction about his end. Leonardo da Vinci, with his scientific and artistic achievements and mysterious predictions about his death, is remembered as one of the greatest figures in history. His indirect prediction of his death casts light on the darker and less understood aspects of his life, remaining one of the unresolved mysteries in the realms of history and art.